everybody, I'm Ar from the A to Z Show, and welcome to Roll Film, where we look at the upcoming releases of the week and tell you what's good, what's bad, and what's in between. And the question that we pose today with these releases is, are all January movies bad? and why. Now statistically speaking there is a lot of snow outside for a lot of people so that may mean that they aren't going to the theaters thus a lot of studios are like why should we release movies if they're not going to make that much money. There's also the way studios work and where they fund a really really big project which they want you to see in the summer but then these are all the projects that they feel will not do the best job or you know are really bad sequels so they release them during this time in hopes that they may not be risking a lot. Sometimes you do have your special ones that come out of nowhere but mostly it's just a dumping ground for those movies while it's also award season so all of those limited releases are expanding and maybe people will want to see those instead so we got three movies today and i can say that yeah january is still just as bad and i've also seen pride and prejudice and zombies and the finest hours so i can say that it's at least not as bad as last year's january but Deadpool will be coming out soon, so we'll just wait for that. However, let's get into the ones that we have for today, starting off with Michael Bay's 13 Hours. And this is the third time that he's actually made a movie that is based off of real events. He had Pearl Harbor, people didn't like that. He also had Pain and Gain, people really did not like that and got offended. Now we have this one, which I'm pretty sure people are also not going to like as well. However, that doesn't mean that it's a bad film. I don't think it's Michael Bay's best, but there's definitely been the scenario of Michael Bay having one too many explosions in his movies, really bad scripts, or three, you know, just making his movies commercials where he has a bunch of product placement. Now, to me personally, the explosions aren't bad. People always say, oh, well, go watch a Michael Bay movie with explosions. The explosions, it's his Bayham. If you've seen that video, it's him being able to make these cinematic experiences that are just spectacles. That's not a bad thing. And he showcases it here very well. It's the scripts in his movies, which are usually really bad, but luckily this one is based off of a real story. And it doesn't have that really bad comedy that is forced into the other movies. There's still the banter between between the soldiers, but that comedy is long gone. In terms of the product placement, of course he's going to find ways for the soldiers to always be drinking Budweiser or them, you know, showcasing off their Mercedes-Benz vehicles that they have, but it works better in this movie, especially for one of the Mercedes vehicles that they have, which just gets shot at like it's the Batmobile, and then by the end of it still looks better than a used car. Sadly, at a certain point, the movie does feel like it's going to be 13 hours long, and I know that some people won't like the shaky cam, but to me, I love how saturated his movies look, and I feel that they would perfectly go well in those Best Buy ads when they're trying to sell you a TV and they have like a movie still. This movie could definitely fit in that. You have the gore and the violence in this movie that never goes, you know, grotesque to the point that it's Tarantino and too over the top, or too soft where it's like unbroken and blood doesn't exist. No, it's brutal to the point that people get shot up in half, and I don't mean sawed in half or blown up in half. I mean, bum, 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 shot up in half. There are people walking around with limbs missing and stuff like that, and it's brutally real, and that's the part that gets you invested in the movie. However, the characters aren't as strong as they can be, and he still suffers in that part of the script department, because yeah, you have John Krasinski, who everybody loves as Jim from The Office, and you're seeing him here, and you're like, John Krasinski, you've been trying so hard to be a BA character, maybe you'll get it here, but by the end you realize, you like him more because he reminds you of Jim from The Office playing a soldier than really what they did with the script to make you like him. By the end of it, I still think that he has some amazing shots in there, all covered by what feels like J.J. Abrams having a sale of his lens flares for this movie. But I'd say depending on how much you like the movie Lone Survivor, then this will either be a junior price if you liked it, but if you still enjoyed Lone Survivor like I did, but at the amount that I did, then it's definitely a solid rent it because there are some amazing shots in this movie mixed in with the shaky cam that will fit perfectly in the TV that you have at home. Next up, we have Ride Along 2. And ever since I implemented my rating system, I've always felt that they should be ratings dealing with how you should view a movie because every movie deserves to be viewed, just some a little bit more than others, but viewed nonetheless, which is why I have my work of art rating, which is the one that goes to just a few movies. But then there's the combo price rating for the movies that you definitely need to experience in theaters, junior price for the ones that should be seen in theaters, but you know, at a junior price, rent it for the movies that should be seen, but you can see them at the comfort of your own home, and those movies that, yeah, sure, you can miss, but if you watch them, you know, it's not bad, so a stream it when you're at home and it's just streaming in the background, but there's a rating that I give for the movies that literally there's, there's no reason to see them, and that is my coaster rating where the movie serves a better purpose as a coaster for your drink than actually being watched. I'm gonna explain why. Really, the movie, all it is, is just Kevin Hart doing something dumb, and then Ice Cube 
repeating what he's doing. Oh man, he's touching the trash. Oh man, you dancing? Oh man, it doesn't feel like it's a good day today. And I don't see how that's funny. Granted, Ice Cube, this is probably his best performance because usually he's just mad. Here he's just mad with a little bit extra flair. But there's a point in this film where you look at other movies and you say, yeah, I get so cartoony to the, to the point that it feels like a video game. This movie literally turns into a video game and I feel like you're not understanding it. Kevin Hart literally at a certain point turns the movie into a video game. And it, I only laugh two times in this film, it gets that coaster rating. Last but not least, we have a movie that I'm pretty sure you haven't heard of and it's better than Ride Along 2, mainly because it has the craziest log line that I've heard all year, even though the year just began, but that is for The Masked Saints. This is the log line. There is a wrestler who works for the WFW who just so happens to dress like a luchador. He resigns because he wants to move to a small town where he can be a pastor during the day and a masked vigilante at night. I wish I was kidding about this, but it is actually a Christian Canadian film that came out that's actually based off of a true story and is also Roddy Piper's final role. But this is one of those movies that it's so bad it's good for those first 45 minutes and I can't recommend it enough until it then turns into your regular Christian movie with really bad acting and people getting converted even though they were living a life of sin for so long. So I'd say it's definitely worth catching if it's streaming for free and just for those first 45 minutes before it just turns into your bland Christian movie. However, those are the films that we had this weekend. Definitely let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Definitely also let me know for the past 10 years, what do you think has been the best January release? We can discuss it down below in the comment section. To me, it's been Cloverfield and you'll understand why in another video that I'm making, but we can discuss anything dealing with the movies that we talked about in this episode or the movies that are coming up down below in the comment section. And don't forget that I may not have Explosions or John Krasinski on my channel, but I do have 13 hours worth of content, which you can comment, like, and subscribe down below. Keep watching movies and until next time, I'll see you guys later.